Hi there, and welcome back to another Baja Blast. I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about the horizon line, one of the strong graphic compositions when you're doing landscapes. I do four favorite of mine, there's four of them that I really like, uh, that I use all the time. But this one is all about, well, one of them. And it's about the horizon line. Everything happens on the horizon line. Okay, you've got a lot of stuff going on, but the eye goes to the horizon line. That's the focal point. That's just the graphic design of it. So some of these are my practice pieces, my little 10 inch by 10 inch early morning warm ups. I'm in the studio and I make it all up. I don't go out and set up my easel in plein air. This is what I do. I just stay home and in the studio and I just keep making it up. So this one is a series of uh, working on the low horizon line. Here's a painting still working on the low horizon line, but see, it's all about the sky when it's a low horizon line. When it's a high horizon line, it's a painting of the land. Duh, right? So these are my practice pieces where the eye keeps going right to the horizon line. See, it's up high. And it's also here it goes to the horizon line because of the contrast. The eye usually goes to the part that has the most contrast. So that's what I'm working on here. And look at the contrast here. See how that one just stood right out there? Everything's happening on the horizon line. It's pretty low, below the center line, but your eye goes right to this little focal point. And that's what I'm gonna do, a, two demos for you. Two landscapes using the high horizon line, it'll be the painting of the land, and a low horizon line, a painting of the sky. Let's get started. So I'm starting off with a half sheet of Kilimanjaro watercolor paper, 300 pound uh, from Cheap Joe's. Of course, you know how much I like it. The price is right. I'm also putting on my paper, this Joe's Prime really good clear gesso. Hey, they, it came with my last order, so I thought I'd use it. So you know how I like to put gesso on top of my paper so the surface can get banged up a bit and really take on to my acrylic painting. Well, here we go again, but this time it's Joe's Prime really good clear gesso. Hey, it came in the box, I may as well use it. It's pretty nice. It looks like 2% milk, but it does dry clear. So now I have an acrylic finish, right? And that's the whole idea of painting with acrylics. My acrylics are happen to be Holbein acrylics. I have my white out here, sitting out here. I have some colors that are blues. I have my amethyst, my blues, my compost blue too, and uh, manganese blue, dark green, cadmium yellow, orange, and red. This is going to be a low horizon line. So basically it's a paint of the sky. Here we go. I'm gonna use a big brush. Just one of those crazy big brushes. Starting off the low horizon line. I use this brush. Big bucket of water, here we go. Go. Put all kinds of colors in here at the beginning. This is just like way too much fun first thing in the morning, <laughs> right? In the studio. There we go, make it simpler. Making sure it stays in the horizon line, it stays low. All right, I need to also tape it down. I forgot to tape it down. There's that tape I always put on the back side, like that. Kind of keeps it from sliding around. There we go, now the sky. Let's use this big brush for this guy. I'm going to be doing some negative shape painting. Roughly put it in. Big shapes. Woo. More water. There's a lot of color in this. In this tube of paint. Holy cow. Big cumulus soft edged clouds. Whew. 
Big brushes, always big brushes. Poor paper towels. I like how wet it is. It's flowing beautifully. Oh, this is a gentle day. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Let's use some of this manganese up in here. Really rich. Oh, man. I paint places I like to go to in my mind here in my own studio. I love the energy. I like how it's, it's so wet. It just keeps painting itself. Some edges are hard edges. Some are soft. But I definitely like the movement here. Just like real clouds, they're moving all the time. Oh, uh, this is fun. So I'm gonna make this ground a little bit more exciting. Lightening it up a bit. You know, as the land recedes away from you, it gets lighter. So I'm gonna make it lighter. And as it comes towards you, it gets darker. Oh yes, it does. This is like the cliffs here in the Central Coast. Down by the beach area. But the colors do get lighter as they go further away. So, there you go. So this is a good example of the low horizon line. Kind of an ocean line out there. I think I'm gonna make it more oceany. Here we go. More oceany. Yeah, that's the name. <laughs> it's nice and bright. I've just made the waves brighter by making the, the edge darker. Further away. Kind of resembles some of the waves we have here. Reflection in here. I gotta keep on working on this forever and ever. But we're gonna leave it there. That's the low horizon line, so you can see that it's really a painting of the sky. I like where it's all going. It's fun. The trick now is to leave it alone. Hey, let's do one with the high horizon line. The high horizon line. Here we go. <laughs> this is just a nice wash. Really watered down, very much watered down acrylic. I might want to make it a little bit lighter, lighter. So I'm adding more titanium white in there. Now, as the sky goes up, of course, it's gonna get darker. So I just wanna work on that one right now. I use my whole arm, my whole body when I paint. I don't sit. It's, I figure it's my daily exercise. Okay, here we go. Now really make this wet. This is going to make it really wet. Oh. Really wet. Make it darker up, up here. We bring in some of this marigold up here. Whoa. Look at that color. Oh my gosh. It's a transparent color marigold. But it, it can be so rich. Like you can see right here. And I'm painting wet into wet right now. So it's kind of like a lagoon is what I'm doing here. I also want to maybe splash on some rubbing alcohol. This is my rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. And let's see what happens. 
Oh yeah. Great way to get texture, huh? It's pretty subtle, but that's rubbing alcohol. I like to use it just because it just breaks up the surface. Pick up some black. By bringing in the black, it just makes the rest of the stuff more dramatic. It's like this little pond reflecting. But the eye's still gonna go out here. Working all over at the same time. Don't stay in one place too long. Man, I want this area to be really, really white. We have these beautiful dunes, dunes near here. And that's what the feeling I'm getting. Oceano. Beautiful. paint just keeps developing <laughs> the more I paint because it's nice and wet big wide brush sweeping strokes and what I'm working on right now is making sure the darkest parts are closer lighter parts are further away I want to make the sky even brighter what I call the beautiful bluebird day at the ocean. Here we go. So the painting is nice and wet. Look, it keeps painting itself. Look, it's crawling up into here. I do put a little bit of texture in the front with the paper towel, just to give it a little bit of texture. Not so much that it draws so much attention to itself. So this is a very calming piece. Now if I wanted to put a little bit of focal points, like someone out there on the beach. With their stuff. It shows human interest. And that just using color to do that. But the eye is going to go to the part of the painting that has that kind of attention, that kind of detail, hard edge, color. You don't put it somewhere else. Otherwise, it draws the eye away. So here we go. I wouldn't mind being there right now. So that's the high horizon line on the shores of California. Okay. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this one now. You know, we need to go outside and take a look at the real landscape. Let's go. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Look at the horizon line here. Where is it? Is it low or high? Now it's a low horizon line when it's a photograph of the sky, right? You know, the clouds, the whole bit, and those noisy crows in the background. Hey, hey, you know, I'm gonna be doing more of these, of the other three favorite compositions in a landscape. Stay tuned. I'll see you on the next Bob Blast, and thanks for watching. Hi there, this is Bob Burridge, and I'm here to tell you about a special Thursday night, all of April, date night with Bob. But we get to paint the live model. Haven't you always wanted to paint the live model, the undraped and costumed model for two hours? Think of it, every Thursday night, I get to paint, you get to paint, we get to see the same poses. This is Pash, our professional model. She's been with me for so many years. Uh, and it's two hours each time. You don't have to worry about your drawing skills. It's all about painting the professional model. Okay? And I did all of these paintings that you see behind me with the brush. There's no drawing. So don't worry about that part. I'm going to help you through all of that. I hope to paint and zoom with you 
every Thursday night in April with Date Night with Bob's.